My name is Dr. Leanza Tang. I am a low vision optometrist. I am the director of low vision services at New York Eye and Ear Infirmary of Mount Sinai. And thank you for joining us in honor of Low Vision Awareness Month. Um, so one question uh, someone might have is why do I have low vision? Yeah, so low vision can be caused by many different eye conditions. I would say some of the more common eye conditions include glaucoma, macular degeneration, and diabetic retinopathy. Um, but of course, there's other hereditary and congenital conditions that can lead to vision loss as well. So low vision services is considered a specialty in eye care that try and help people with decreased vision because of one of these eye conditions. Typically when more conventional eyeglasses, contact lenses or other surgeries can no longer help improve their vision. And what are the symptoms of low vision? I would say the most common symptom of low vision is actually blurry vision um, that again cannot be corrected or improved with uh, standard eyeglasses, contact lenses, or eye surgeries. And this usually translates to um, difficulty seeing small print, maybe like a sign far away that you used to be able to see, uh, maybe difficulty reading a book, um, your mail, your bills, watching television. Uh, those are just a few examples, um, but definitely just blurry vision. And then for some people, because of their eye condition, they actually have missing or blind spots, usually in their central vision. Sometimes these spots can actually just be blurry or distorted. And again, this would make things like seeing and recognizing people's faces a lot more difficult. Um, and then other times, some people have side vision loss, which is what we typically see with our glaucoma patients. Uh, this can make walking around, um, navigating stairs, curbs, very, very difficult. Uh, when we or when someone has more severe side vision loss, this usually affects their mobility. And again, they start to bump or trip over things. And how to, um, how to manage low vision and will it get worse? Yeah, so I definitely recommend seeing a low vision doctor like myself if you can. And it's never too early to start seeing one. I think a lot of people think low vision doctors only see people who have severe or profound vision loss, but that's not true at all. Uh, we definitely see people who we consider have more mild vision loss and unfortunately those who do have more severe or profound vision loss. I would say one of the most common misconceptions um, about um, low vision patients is that they are all considered legally blind, which is not quite true. There is again actually an exact definition um, to follow to see if someone meets the requirements for legal blindness. So if you uh, would like to know, or if you know someone who would like to know if they do meet the criteria for legal blindness, please ask your eye care provider to clarify. I would say typically most people are referred to low vision either by their ophthalmologist or optometrist who is managing their eye condition, but not all the time. Some people self-refer themselves, which is great. I've had people who said they watched another one of my presentations and that they were interested in low vision services. In terms of um, vision getting worse, it's unfortunately very difficult to say whether someone's vision will or will not get worse over time. It really depends on the person's eye condition. But one thing I can stress here is just the importance of following up with your eye care provider who is managing your eye condition as they tell you to do so and taking those medications, your eye drops as prescribed. And what resources are available for people with low vision? Yeah, a good place to start is actually our low vision website. Um, I think it's nye.edu. Uh, we'll leave a link below. Um, there's actually a video I did of another presentation where I go a little more in depth about low vision services and low vision exams and other devices as well. But there are other great low vision organizations in New York City that I work closely with um, every single day. They also have websites where you can learn more about low vision in general and some of the services they offer. So again, we'll leave links, um, but one of them is called the New York State Commission for the Blind. There's Visions, the Lighthouse Guild, and Helen Keller Services for the Blind. And what is the difference between a low vision exam and a routine eye exam? Yeah, that's a very good question because my low vision exams are very, very different. Uh, one of the first things I tell my patients um, is that I'm focused more on how they're functioning day to day versus the scans, the, uh, let's see, the side vision tests, the eye pressure checks, the dilations, that is all being managed by the other doctor. So that's why it's also important to go back and see them when they want you to. 
Um, but for me, I'm really interested in finding out what the patient's goals or complaints are with their vision. So I already mentioned a few earlier. So like difficulty reading, small print, um, whether it's their price labels, uh, medication labels, a book. Uh, I already mentioned the difficulties watching television, um, uh, seeing street signs, bus numbers, the list goes on and it really can be anything. And for low vision, I would say my exams are typically longer. Um, I have one hour appointments and I'm actually the one spending the whole time with the patient. Um, so we really do go through a lot. I would say the biggest difference is when we start trying out some low vision devices to see if they're suitable to help a patient reach their goal. I have a couple here today that I can demonstrate. Um, so one of them is called a hand magnifier. These are probably the most common that people are familiar with, but uh, they're mostly for what we call spot reading tasks. So something quick like your price labels or your medication labels. But this is just my reading card here today. And you can see it just magnifies the text and makes it bigger. They do come in different powers. So that is why I recommend a low vision evaluation to make sure that you're using the most appropriate one. Say someone does want to sit down and read a book uh, and read for a more extended period of time. We have what we call stand magnifiers. So how this is used, the person would actually be sitting at a desk or a table and you just rest it on your reading material and you slide it across as you read. Uh, but same thing, if you can see, it just magnifies the words and make things bigger. They do have lights on them, but if I turn it on, it kind of washes everything out. <laughs> Um, another type of magnifier I have, but nowadays there's technology. So I have what we call a digital magnifier, very same or very similar uh, situation here where you just put it over your reading material, makes the words a lot bigger. So it's easier to read. You can adjust how big you want the words. And also you can change the colors, which is one of the benefits of using more digital device. So those were all devices for reading. Um, for distance, like the bus numbers, the street signs, the other example I give is in New York City, when you're standing on the subway platform and you wanna see when the next train's coming, we can recommend or prescribe telescopes. So a person would learn and practice focusing it and then spotting what they need to with the device. Um, typically the last thing I do uh, a part of, as part of my low vision evaluation is discussing any additional services that I think might benefit the person. These usually include what we call orientation and mobility training or travel training. Again, for those who are having difficulty walking around or just traveling independently because of their vision loss. There's also training for household tasks. So like cooking, doing laundry, housework, and so on. Again, with technology, there are great devices, um, built in accessibility on computers, smartphones, um, laptops. So if they already have a device, um, further technology training might benefit them to use those devices more efficiently. And lastly, um, I always wanna make sure that my patients have the resources they need if they are feeling sad, angry, or anxious about their vision loss because it is very, very difficult to experience vision loss, whether it's sudden or gradual. And again, I just wanna make sure my, pa or my patients have access to support and behavioral health resources if they need it. And lastly, what low vision services does the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary at Mount Sinai offer? Yeah, so I offer low vision evaluations most days of the week. Um, I complete pretty much everything that I had just discussed. Uh, except some of those services at the end where I do have to refer to other organizations, but otherwise I want to get an idea of what the patient's goals are and we can try devices. I also order the devices for the patients and then we can see them back.